All right, Dr. Caretha Mitchell, there's a debate going on in Nubia right now. Uh, is monogamy natural? And my question was, what's natural? <laughs> All of these norms have been set by people. Like, what is, what's normal? What's natural? However you want to move in the world, if monogamy is not for you, then it's not natural for you. If you demand that you want to be with one person for the rest of your life, well, you better find somebody that has the same edict and that's your person. But what's natural? Are you, you're disagreeing with that? To my mind, um, monogamy isn't natural for anyone, period. What I'm saying is that you have to choose monogamy on purpose because it isn't natural. The only reason why we are even encouraged to think that it's natural is because we're all drenched in the dominant discourse that has put marriage on a pedestal, that has put monogamy on a pedestal because it wants marriage on a pedestal to determine who we who we um, let inherit money and who we don't let inherit money. So there's nothing natural about monogamy. It simply is the dominant discourse that the people who are powerful have maintained their power through. And so that's the reason why even heterosexuality is put on a pedestal and we act as if it's natural because it feeds into the power structure that we can't escape. All of us are drenched in those messages. So we don't know what it would mean to not be drenched in the idea that monogamy is natural, right, and better, is more moral. Like we don't even know if we think it's more moral um, or not because we've never had an experience in life that didn't drench us with the idea ah. that you must be immoral if you don't put monogamy on a pedestal. So that's oh, why. Wait, so you're 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 talking. Mm, you're saying a lot. Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. And as you're talking, it was, maybe it's the germaphobe in me. The notion of sharing <laughs> bodies with a bunch of different people is just not something that I ever want to do. One at a time. One at a time. <laughs> one at a time. At least I can deal with that. Me, just uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. So it's natural for me. Let me just okay. say that it's okay. natural for me. I can't imagine sharing up and, and maybe it's part of like, I also am like, but you're my person, you're mine person. And that's a person. possessive idea mm -hmm. that comes yeah, from is. the fact that you've been drenched in the worldview that is capitalism that teaches you to prize ownership. <gasps> I'm a colonizer. No, to prize no, ownership. Yeah. That that to that that of course something is better if I own it. Of course something is better. Like oh oh wait a minute, Doctor Doctor Mitchell, hold up, hold up. <laughs> so my husband, uh -huh. my husband, my uh -huh. wife, eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. You're saying there's something inherently wrong. With that notion I'm, that that's my person and you can't have them. What that's I'm telling me. you is that all of the values that you attach are not natural. It is coming from a worldview that you cannot undo. You cannot undo what capitalism has taught you about ownership, Karen. And we've been so drenched in it that we see everything in terms of ownership. That is simply being human because we have to filter the world some way and we've been drenched with these ideas. I couldn't come completely clean of them if I wanted to, but I do want us to at least be aware of what we're drenched in and how that has influenced what we assume is just obviously better. Of course, I want my this, my that. Do, but do you see what I mean about I do. The freedom? I do. I do. It's making me uncomfortable, but I do. And I want to <laughs> sit in this. No, I want to sit in the dis discomfort because we have to challenge what we think and how we feel about things. So why did you marry Craig? If so it is a very deliberate choice. So what I what I love about our relationship is that on purpose, on purpose, Karen, every day we choose each other and the reason that's important to me and it's part of what i talk with my students about especially because i'm in you know ohio i'm in the midwest and these students in particular the the girl students the women students in particular have never considered the idea of being a whole person by themselves before getting in a relationship so that's part of why i have so much clarity about this what I have clarity about is that um, 
you know, when I met Craig, I guess that's part of how I should go back to explain, right? When I met Craig, part of what I was clear about, I will never forget, I, I had a, a mentor who said to me, you know, Caritha, it's just as easy to fall in, some, in love with someone that you're not compatible with as somebody you are compatible with. So you better be careful about doing things with people you're not compatible with because you'll wake up and have a life you didn't mean to have. Mm. And that stuck with me. And so when I got to graduate school, I was so scared, Karen, that I was not going to um, survive in graduate school and succeed in graduate school and come out with a PhD. And so after my first year of finishing well and being convinced that, yeah, you're going to survive and you're actually going to do well. Okay, Caritha, so then is all you want at the end of this journey a PhD or do you want a life? And so I decided that I also wanted a life. So it was at that point, at the end of my first year of grad school, that I decided that I would at least be open to dating because I hadn't been open to it because I was all about not failing out of PhD school. <laughs> and so that was the point at which I met Craig. Look, I don't want to draw this out. So the point is, when I met him, part of what I knew that I knew that I knew is that I had to make sure that I was dealing with someone who um, was secure in himself and loved what he did because only if he were those two things would he allow me to love what I do and be secure in me. And so what I'm saying is that that was part of the deliberate choice from mm. the very beginning. And then as we've made this life together, we've again, over and over, just made those deliberate choices. And so, yeah, marriage was part of that deliberate choice, especially from his standpoint. We had a little bit of an argument about whether we needed to do that or whatever. But, you know, we talked that through and came to a deliberate decision about it and have built a really great life together. But uh, our marriage it's doesn't make it. Okay. Is is he Mitchell or did you come in with Mitchell and kept Mitchell? So his name is Craig Jones. Okay. So Caritha that Mitchell. answers. Yeah. You, you stayed Caritha Mitchell. Yeah, of course. And that's, and that's, <laughs> okay. I love, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this as somebody who realizes that everything that I've been taught and uh, it even had to go through this kind of religious thing, you know, because growing up in, in the church, being baptized at 11, you are so indoctrinated and that's a rooted ground. I mean, it's so deep yeah. to go away and come back and, you know, land on. All right. I believe that there is a higher power. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm not, you know, call it God a lot. She, he, I think we shouldn't put gender on things period. Um, but there's a force, there's a force that's in me, that's in you. And so spiritually I'm operating in like my force needs to connect with other forces that can drive the, drive us all forward. You know, I, you're right. Coming in as a whole person is super important. Being evolved as a human being is super important. Um, but everybody's got to make that decision. I think some people are looking for mommy and daddy. Some people are looking for comfort and joy. Some people are looking, you know, to fill in their, their empty spaces. Um, your intention. I love it. Um, coming in whole with another whole person to share an experience called life. But see, you, you know what you had me think again, you know, one of the things I shared, one of the other times I visited with you was that line from the color purple, just because I love her, don't take away none of her rights. Like, what would happen for people? And this is just something I want people to think about. Like, what would happen if you really um, sought after something that wasn't about owning somebody else and making um, and doing that my this, my that? Like, what would that open up? What would mm. that, could you find more value in that, right? Because that's what I mean about how, yeah, we have the marriage, it's the legal paper that the society um, acknowledges, but what we have is so much more valuable than marriage because marriage is through all of the discourses and practices that I'm talking about, right? The thing that makes what we have way more valuable is that on purpose, we're on this journey together. 
Right. And, and marriage can't do that for you because if it could, we wouldn't have so much divorce, right? Right, <laughs> right, <if> could, right. <laughs> And I also think everyone, a lot of people are living their lives on the outside of themselves based on approval, right? Yes. From other people. So yes. you marry because mother, father, that's what the family, we got to do it because that's what it don't look right to be a single woman. What's yes. wrong with you? And especially black women, because yes. we are in those dating apps on the bottom of the totem pole. So yes. there's then, then there's also validation of self. Yes. outside of yourself though you're not valid right. within yourself because if you were you'd be okay with whatever mm -hmm. but now we got to live well how are people going to see me what are they going to think about me and you know am I enough or I'm not enough because nobody is with me I'm not oh that's why you're single you know like that's the easiest comeback for it, it is and the easiest that absolutely tells me what a low vibrational person when that's your comeback well that's why you're single no I'm single by choice Clearly, I've had marriage proposals on the air. I could be married, been married, made a decision. I'm never going to be married again. That's me. This is the choice like for myself. Oprah. Just like Oprah and a bunch of other people. I was yeah. going to bring up this brother today um, who I learned about in class with Carl on Saturday, who I didn't know. Again, it's it's like one of when I when I talk about the first, sometimes we never get to appreciate the person that comes first. Did you know? And you probably did because you're freaking well studied. Edward Alexander Boucher. Do you know him? Edward nope. Alexander, B-O-U-C-H-E-T. The first time I heard his name was this weekend. The very first black person to earn a Ph.D. in this country at Yale. He went to Yale, got a Ph.D. in physics. Dr. Mitchell, physics, wow. Wow. got a Ph.D. in physics. He was Phi Beta Kappa, graduated from Yale in 1876 after wow. completing his dissertation in mother freaking physics. Oh, wow. OK, couldn't teach, though, couldn't go to school. And I think about the sadness of this brilliant man who died alone mm. in an unmarked grave with no children, never been married, mm. but was so mother freaking brilliant, mm. but could never pursue because he's black in America. Yep. You yep. give me the Ph.D. from Yale, but I can't teach there. Yeah, I got the PhD from Yale. Can't teach there. Can't teach at any of these universities. Can't impart this. So, so you know, not that. So he went to a black school, which he did. But it's like, but he couldn't fulfill all of the things. And I just imagine somebody with that kind of mind, because today physics is tough. I don't know too many black people with physics PhDs today, or people. Period. I mean, it's tough. People. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You know, and we got to stop that. But I'm just, I'm just thinking about all of the people who came before, and it's like they made it easier for the next person and the next person, but we got to honor the first person, but I just want people to live their lives. Let's take some calls. Cause you don't got the phone lines lit up. People um, <laughs> confused. They're confused. They don't know what to do with themselves. Let's go to Tim in Texas. Hi, welcome to the Karen Hunter show. Dr. Karitha Mitchell is with us. Hi, Tim in Texas. Hi. Karen. Hi. Huh. So Karen, I, 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 I gotta disagree with a whole bunch of, was said. I, I think marriage is always a volunteer sport, unless you're in a religion that says it's a pre-choice before you even get in there. Um, I myself have been married for 31 years. Congrats. Um, I have. I guess. I have a mom and dad that was married for 50 years. I have a mother-in-law and father-in-law that was married for about the same time. Both of us have grandparents that were married. Um. I myself have been in the legal field for 29 years. I've been a judge for 22 years. My wife works in ophthalmology. She works at the okay. VA. I don't know. I don't need years. your resume, Tim. I don't know what, what that has I, to do well, with you. Make the point, please. I, we got a bunch of callers. Okay. Make your point. I get you. Here's my point. My point is we are two people who support each other. Not 50-50, 100-100. She support my career. I support her career. And um, there is no ownership. There okay. is, um, we have we have kids, we have grandkids. Um, so I'm still trying to find a disagreement because I think Dr. Caritha, none, neither one of us has well, a problem. Where, where is the disagreement? Well, the disagreement was on the natural part of it. To okay. say that it's not natural um, is to say that um, kids aren't raised better in a two-parent relationship. Are they? They are. Based on um, what? Room, give me the give me the statistics. Answer. You know, and I don't even want to give because who does the studies? Who does who's doing the studies? 
I have to jump in here. <laughs> yeah, please come on in, Doctor Queen, because I, I feel like Tim, this is not your area of expertise. That, yeah, from what you, you know, the thing that not. the thing that I want to emphasize oh. is the reason why it's worth considering Tim from Texas, and you know I'm a Texan, so hello. The reason it's worth hello. considering that it's not natural, Tim, is that. Um, if it were so natural, why would we need so many laws that make um, marriage put on a pedestal? The fact that there are tax breaks simply because you're married. The fact that we've created a society in which um, you know, you can't get health care just because you're a citizen. You have to get health care through a job or maybe through your spouse's job. So simply the fact that you're married to somebody gives you another avenue to health care in this society. So what I'm suggesting is let's pay attention to everything this society has done to put marriage on a pedestal. And that will give you some indication of how the assumptions that we have about how right it is, how morally better it is, how more beneficial it is, don't come out of nowhere. They come from an entire society and structure that has put it on a pedestal. So that's what I mean when I say it's not natural. It has been constructed by a society that is very deliberately put together. And it is a hierarchical hierarchical society, meaning there's, there's, you know, above and below. So you're saying everything you're saying, Tim, in a society that almost guarantees that a woman will make less money than a man. You can't divorce that either from a society that puts marriage on a pedestal and keeps women in a situation where they will be financially devastated if they get out of a marriage. And a man has much more of a likelihood to be financially okay even after divorce. So none of this is in a vacuum. We've all been drenched in these ideas. Tim? Yes, well, I tell you, here's my handicap, I guess, if you want to accept it as that. Um, Everything I'm saying is also born out of a, a faith, a religion. Yeah, um, which is also religious. crafted. I mean, of course. Stella, I mean, but Stella I mean, Manning, so 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 I, I stop, stop, please. I don't want you to stop believing. What? Listen, I don't want you to stop believing what you believe. But even what you believe has been literally planted. Have you ex? Have you ever examined why you believe what you believe, Tim? Religiously, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Matter of fact, I went back and I even crunch numbers ended up in a different place than what I started in only because they went back and said why do I believe in this thing so so you started out um, as a Muslim and now you're a Christian uh, no ma'am you start out as a Christian no, now you're a different kind of Christian yes yeah okay that's so not changing anything flavors. Kim thank you I gotta move we gotta move on I, I, I suspected that but I knew it and you know the the stuckness and uh, listen I, I'm not trying to make Tim feel bad about anything but I feel like the kind of scholarship, and it's not even scholarship, the, ex the deep examination of self to arrive at a place where you know for sure, for sure, I am not indoctrinated. And even then, like you said, it's impossible to not be. Yeah. I, I, I have to examine all of the anti-Blackness that I've, you know, all of the little, I have to check my mother sometimes. Yes. You know, we were talking about Viola. She says, I was like, why did you say that? Well, you know, I didn't, you know, I, I, yeah. yeah. And she had to, like, she had to, like, but I'm gonna check my mother on yeah. it because when it shows up, I we have to be pristine. We can't let anything go. Yeah. Even with yeah, ourselves. Let's talk. It's, tough. it's, it's tough. active. I, I love how you model for us the active, the active, deliberate choices. That's what you're modeling for us. And that's what I find so empowering and so important. I have to kind of backpedal, uh, not backpedal, I, I want to go back to this idea of faith being the reason. And again, Christianity is a set of beliefs, which means it's a set of thoughts. It's a world view. One of the things that I find worth asking questions about is in the same way that capitalism makes you see more value in my husband, my wife, Christianity also is a worldview that says there's only one way to do something. There's only one way to get to the Father, only by me. And I have to tell you, Karen, when I was in grad school, 1998, and I went to Japan for the first time, and I was being shown around the city and, and taught about um, a religion that had nothing to do with Christianity and had no relationship to it, I, in that moment, said to myself, wait a second, do I actually believe that an all-knowing God would create a system in which these people could not have any relationship because they didn't have the one way? 
So Christianity, we have to recognize, Ooh. is also a worldview. It's a way of seeing the world. It sets you up to believe there's only one right way. I just want us to recognize the tendency, the habit, the mental pattern of thinking there's only one right way. I want you to see that as one of the results of living in a so-called Christian nation. Oh, Cause look at all the dirt people can do with Christianity, but they still yeah. can use it to, to in, insist that there's only one right way. And there's only one way to be moral at the same time. They do dirt, Karen. Well, you and were talking about, but not, you were talking about wait, anyway. wait, hello, that, that part, unless you read Aramaic or even Greek, all these translations. You are, you are letting some degenerate called King James lead your life. I'm sorry, I'm not here for that. But that's okay. it. 866-801-8255. As you were talking, I was like, the same men that wear dressing, makeups, and, and, and wigs want to tell us that you, you have to be but monogamous. Want you to bash yeah. trans women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. You mm -hmm. come on. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Make it make sense. If it doesn't, then we gotta examine it.